So when we render out our scenes, we want to go first into this little camera tab, make sure it's set to Eevee. So we're using Eevee. I usually turn on ambient occlusion, screen um, space reflections, um, bloom, and I play with that a little bit. Also, you just want to check what, how everything looks. And now I'm going to render out these two different scenes. I have scene one and scene two. So everything's set here. I'll keep every other setting as is. And now I will go into this little printer tab. And so you want to make sure your resolution is uh, set 1920 by 1080 is fine. For the frame start and frame end, if you don't have 250 frames, for my camera one, I have 30. So I'll keep it set to that for camera two, um, I have 30 as well. So here I'm gonna end this um, probably a little bit after 30. So I'll add a couple frames. So maybe I ended at 40, which is something you could do because you might wanna transition when you get into the video editing. So you add a little bit of um, some end frames to this to give it a little bit of padding. The file format now is going to be PNG. Um, you can keep everything else. Everything else should be fine. Now, the location and the name, you'll want to change this to make sure all of your files go into the same spot. So I'm going to click on the folder. And I'm going to go to my desktop. And I'll create a new um, folder here. And I'll call this. Um, just for my purposes, I'll call it animation test one, uh, accept. And let's see, did it save it in there? Animation test one. Um, I'm going to go into it, accept. You can do this here as well. So every time you have a slash in your name, that means there's a folder. So if I say, um, scene one, and I recommend you do this. Um, for some reason, when I type in here, it wants to delete what I had. So the other thing I'm going to do is go to copy, um, add my, okay, now it's okay, add my scene one here. So I have another folder set now because I created a slash. I gave it a name called scene one. I'm going to hit slash again. Um, and this time I'm going to give this a name. So I'm going to call this um, box underscore fall. I'm going to do one more underscore. So when I do that last underscore, that's where it's going to add the number of the frame. So if I have 30 frames, it will add a one, a two, a three, or four. But the other thing I like to do is add two number signs. So if you have um, like frames that are under 100, you add two number signs and it will pad the numbers. So you want to make sure that the animation starts at zero, one. So if you have something that has less than 100 frames, you only need to pad it once. So you go zero, one, zero, two, zero, three. If you have Anything that's over a hundred um, and under a thousand, you want to pad it three times. So when you start, it'll go zero zero one. And the reason you do that is because when you when you render out the image sequence, if you start at one, then if you go into some video editors, it's going to look at your full sequence, and it will think that after you go to one, you go to two, but then it might go to twenty, and then it goes to three then I'll go to 30. So the padding assures that you always have the correct sequence of your animation being imported. Now with Blender, it works a little differently and I'll show you why. So, um, but your numbers should always be padded with a zero or a couple zeros based on the amount of animation. So that's why I add these number signs here. So once I have that, that should be good. Then I want to, um, so the next little tab over, if you're doing any type of compositing where you're, you're separating the background, you're separating layers, you can actually do that here where you can render out 
all these different uh, types of properties as different layers, and then you kind of bring them back together. For example, you can render out your shadows separately. And then in if you do composite things, you can adjust your set shadows after you render. So there's a, a technique where you adjust all these things afterwards. Um, but we're not doing that here. So this is fine. We can keep that as is. And then right here, this little cone icon, this is where you pick your camera. So this is where you want to make sure you pick the right camera. So for this render, I'm going to pick 001. And then after that, I should be all set. So once I have everything all set, you can just go in the render and say render animation or control F12. You can also go into the rendering tab if you want to watch it. And then you can say uh, render animation. So I'm going to start rendering. So this is our first camera. So this is the camera that's rotating around Suzanne. So I can see that render happening. So it's going to render out 40 frames. And then it's done. So I have that set there. So I got 40 frames from that camera. So I'm going to go back out in the layout. And now I'm going to select camera two. But here, I'm going to make sure I change my name. So you want to keep everything organized because you're going to have a lot of images being outputted during this process. So now when I render out the next camera, camera two, I'm going to go back to this little camera tab here in properties and um, actually the little printer tab. So the camera tab properties should be good. It's already set. I'll click on this little printer tab. And when I go into my name down here, I'm just going to change this scene one to scene two. So I'm going to change that to scene two. So it's going to create a folder called scene two. And actually, I should have named the other one. I should have named this first one like monkey rotation. Um, but here I'm just going to call this um, like maybe box fault two. So just make sure you give each scene a different name or each shot a different name. Uh, so maybe this is box fall, you know, shot two. Never use spaces, always use underscores. You should always use underscores. And right before you get to the end, when you have that numbering, you should always use a number score as well. So I use number score compound. So now I have that set. It's going to create a new folder and it's going to render out the next scene as box fall shot two. And I'll just double check my camera. It's camera two. So I'll go back up to rendering and hit control. This time I'll hit control F12, which is the shortcut. And this is the next little bit of animation. It's this box falling. I got some of these characters in the background, which are purple because they don't have textures on them. So that's my second uh, bit of animation. And it's almost done. And there it is. So I have 40 frames of this box falling. 